Hi, welcome to another video. You'll have to forgive me if I sound bunged up getting over a long cough and cold. I've got no projects on the go at the moment other than repairing this amp for someone. So, As I've mentioned in previous videos, the common failure is this FET down here. So on this board, I've changed this FET, notice the different package, I've changed this FET and nothing else. Now I did see on one YouTube video, not one of mine, someone else's, he changed his FET, plugged it in and the light came on. How long that light stays on for is another matter. I'll show you why. This FET pulls 240 volts, rectified and smoothed, 320 here, pulls 320 volts through this coil, through this FET, down to ground. Collapses in this coil and we get an increase from 320 to 380 volts DC. In order for this FET to work for more than a few seconds, the timing from this PWM controller, current mode PWM controller, needs to be spot on. Collapsing magnetic field is rectified with this diode here, so you get 380 volts. This is a PFC coil and this is the PFC circuit. So as I say, I've changed the FET and that's as far as I've got. But before I put a 2 amp quick blow fuse in here, I will make sure the thing's working first. So I've got my power supply set up. In case this is the first time you've seen me repairing a 450 version 2 Maggi amp, I connect my 18 volts here and my ground to this anode on this 18 volt Zenodiode down here. Looks like someone's already been at it. I can see resin from the solder. So 18.2 volts ground. Let me turn the power supply on. 40 milliamps. That's about right. This one down here. There's usually a hole next to this diode. but So if I just probe this lump of solder and look at the scope. If you've seen any of my other videos, you will know that signal is wrong. It should be a square wave. And I'm looking at the frequency for the first time. It says 96 kilohertz. It should be 86. It's fluctuating a bit, but that signal is totally wrong. Get rid of this menu. This should be off for a certain duration just looks like it's coming down to a spike and we haven't got square wave although we've got 95 96 kilohertz that waveform is wrong but from experience I would also expect 10 to 15 volts peak to peak here we've only got 1.4 so that FET might not even turn on so that's where I'm probing which actually runs to the gate there I'm suspecting this IC is faulty it's taken a hit from the mains when the previous FET has gone short circuit. I'll change this chip and come back to you. What I will show you, so that you don't damage the small tracks underneath this chip, the way I like to remove these, or the preferred method, cut. Except I need some new cutters. Cut one side. There we go. So now with some tweezers and a soldering iron, I can remove these pins. If you turn the board over and try and heat all the legs up at once, you risk pulling the through plating out of the board. The through plating connects these top side tracks to the bottom. Right, I'm back. I've changed this chip. I cut the legs off, pulled four legs out with these tweezers and a soldering iron, and then turn the board over ran the soldering iron down all four legs, heat them all up, pull the remaining chip out. This is part number for the new one, got it from DigiGee. So I've not powered this up yet. Power on, 50, 50 millivolts, touch high. I'd like to see it come down to 40. So again, I will probe this point here. Well, let me put it on the gate so you can see. There's the gate. I'll turn this light off. 
There's the gate. That's looking better. Right, 94 kilohertz, so it's still fast. But 13.9 volts peak to peak. And that all looks good. I think I need to take out this measure. AC RMS clear measurement. Clear that. Right, frequency and peak to peak. Right, so that looks good, although a bit fast. But it doesn't matter if I add a wire here, this point here, to power up the switch mode power supply, this should synchronize and slow down and run at the frequency from this chip. So let me add that wire now. Well, hopefully you can see that. This is a comparator, a four-way comparator. This is where I put over five volts, which then turns this switch mode power supply on. So over five volts here to activate this. When I turn this on, this current would normally go from 40 to 60 milliamps. So that's what we're looking for on here initially. I'll turn it up now and we can look at the scope in a minute. There we go, 6 volts and it's come up to 60 milliamps. Let's see what that looks like on the scope. There we are. Right, so something is wrong. That should be slowing down to 86 kilohertz. But you can see it's struggling to synchronize. I move this trigger up 200 kilohertz that should be 69 from memory you can see we've got some double pulses here so that's wrong if I power this up with the mains this may run for a few minutes or even a few hours or more but it's eventually going to blow up this is running too fast if I turn this 5 volts off 94 Turn it back on. Two hundred and five. The switch mode power supply is either running at the wrong frequency or some capacitors around that first driver are blown. And again, that's where I've been probing. That's the gate. What I did notice is someone's been here. You can see this scabby soldering on this capacitor. Also looks too big unless it's just the solder so maybe that's suspect and I believe the synchronization one is this one here but I'll double check on the schematic but right, here's the transistor I changed this is the chip I've just changed this is the timing capacitor here C131 10 nanofarad and this does the synchronization C195 this runs down so one nanofarad runs down to the switch mode power supply. I actually found 1.5 nanofarad is better than one. So you can see here this pin, RTCT, this capacitor, that's the time sets up the timing for this chip. So I will change this one nanofarad and put a 1.5 nanofarad in. And I will also change this C131, put a new 10 nanofarad. Right, so I've changed the capacitors. That large, odd-looking one that had been changed is this very important one here, C170, 680 picofarad. Very small note. When this transistor turns on, pulls the current through that coil, pulls it down to ground through this current resistor. This line here goes to the current sense. So as that voltage is rising rapidly here, we're smoothing it ever so slightly to the current sense. And remember, this is a current mode PWM. So if the current here is reached, this will stop the output. So it's like pulse by pulse modulation. So if this has been changed to the wrong value, if it's too big, you'll get excessive smoothing. It will also take a long time to charge up and you could exceed the current through this transistor. So keeping that small is important. I don't know why someone's changed that one and nothing else. 
but I've now replaced that 680 picofarad a 1.5 nanofarad here so 1500 1, picofarad and a 10 nanofarad here there's the old ones that was that 680 picofarad it's been changed and I don't know what value that is so it's best to just get rid of it stick a new one in and we've got a 10 nanofarad and a 1 nanofarad and don't forget clean the flux off when you're finished so it looks professional so new one there and there and there let's put the power supply back on and the scope so the ground here 18.2, 18.3 18 18.2 18 here, ground and on this blue wire 5 volts when we are ready so power back on I've still got this turned on so let me turn that down this power supply side plays up right so we've got nothing 50 millivolts touch high there we are that was was 94 kilohertz before that's now 82 13.7 there we are 13.7 peak to peak that looks nice at the moment right I'll turn on the 5 volts for the switch mode power supply there we go 66 kilohertz 66.9 kilohertz so a touch slow because I believe the spec is 68 but that's good enough for me at 66.9 kilohertz 14 volts peak to peak if I give you a look so 67 kilohertz turn this 6 volts off eighty two kilohertz six volts back on down to sixty seven kilohertz and it's fairly rock solid so what one last thing we can do before we plug the mains in we can check the gates on these two fets alter the trigger There we go, 10 volts peak to peak on that first transistor, 12 volts on the second. I am fairly confident if I put a 2 amp quick blow fuse in here, it's either going to work or it's, or it's going to blow this fuse. Since it's a lower current rating fuse, it's unlikely to cause any damage. Right, I put these clamps on, put them under this insulation, everything's screwed down quick insulation test on the base FETs and these two diodes they're not shorting to the case if I now turn the mains on so you've got mains here so that's obviously 240 volts lethal here in the UK so turn the mains on we don't want this 2 amp quick blow fuse to blow but pull it away so I can get to the switch right I saw the fuse flex have we got a power light? Yes, we have. Right, so I will now turn this off. Let this cool down a bit and plug the speaker in. We'll put a signal in and see how it performs. Right, I've got the signal generator set up 1 kilohertz, 60 millivolts output peak to peak. That goes into this lead here, connected to an XLR plug up there, into the XLR here, and the mains obviously here. So I'll now turn the mains on, see if we can pick up the signal here. The volume is turned down at the moment. Right, turning on the mains now. Right, so a little flick, fuse still intact. Turn this light off, the green light, power light is on. Well, turn the volume up. There we go. We've got something there. What am I triggered on? Triggered on the source one. Right, we've got 11 volts peak to peak, one kilohertz sine wave. 
this is the base, that's the treble, better move that away. That's a 4 ohm resistor for the tweeter, 4 ohm resistor for the base. That's so now if I turn the signal up. That's 30 volts peak to peak. Well, I've turned this down to 20 volts of division. I know when these are cold, we should have 100 volts peak to peak, at which time the current through this resistor will increase and this power supply will start limiting at 100 volts. Not because of the 100 volts, but because of the current being drawn through this resistor. Right, so we're at 32 volts there. One hundred. Right, let's full volume. So turn it down a second. Don't want to cook the poor amp. So on this amp, 60 millivolts doesn't drive it into the current limit. So let's turn this up just to 70 millivolts. Bearing in mind, you can get one and a half volts off most mixers. Right, 70 millivolts in 27 peak to peak at the moment. There we go. That's going current limit there at 113 volts. But it's, it's cold, so that will decrease as it warms up. 110 volts, touch high. I'll turn it down, 60 volts. So a nice clean sine wave, 1 kilohertz, 64 volts peak to peak at the moment. And this resistor is warming up nicely. So now what I'll do, turn the volume down, wrong way. Now what I'll do, move this scope probe, put it on the treble, which I believe is this end. So you can see we do have a small signal there, some of the bases coming through, but two, uh, two volts peak to peak. So if I turn this frequency up, so the treble is peak, oh, I've pressed the button, wrong. The treble is peaking there. 4 kilohertz, and I know this should com it will come up to about 70 odd volts and compress back down to 50, 55 to protect your tweeter. There you go. Turn it up again. Full volume. It's come down for to 47 volts, peak to peak, just here. So turn the volume down. Turn the frequency back down. Put the scope back on the base. 2.6 kilohertz, 2600 hertz. Very small amount of signal coming through on the base. So turn the frequency down. There we go, one kilohertz. So I would say that is this PFC circuit working perfectly. So that's how to properly diagnose and repair a PFC circuit. Power it up with a power supply, check the signals and repair it properly the first time round. I thought it was a blown transistor and maybe it's taken out the chip. As you've seen I had previously changed the transistor, assumed it was just the chip but I'm checking it with the scope, now the signals were wrong. So if you make sure you get the signals right the first time, it shouldn't fail. So hopefully you've learnt a thing or two. Thanks for watching.